President Obama is on a mission to create jobs. He and members of his Jobs and Competitiveness Council held meetings today in Durham, North Carolina at the headquarters of Cree, a manufacturer of energy efficient lighting. Citigroup Chairman and Jobs Council member Richard Parsons attended today's event and he joins us now live from Durham, North Carolina. Mr. Parsons, welcome to Bottom Line. Thanks for coming on. Mark, nice to be here. Sir, in his weekly radio address, the president said, quoting here, government is not and should not be the main engine of job creation in this country. He continued, that's the role of the private sector. Is it incumbent on the private sector to now take the lead in job creation? Well, I think, Mark, the reality is the private sector has always had the lead in job creation. That's where that's where sustainable jobs come from in, in a competitive and uh, free market economy like ours. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to work more closely with government and trying to find ways that government can help the private sector do its job better. Mr. Parsons, because of the corporate tax rate, which is now at 35 percent, a lot of U.S. businesses are keeping their profits overseas. Should that tax rate be reduced, as many have suggested, and would that be one of the catalysts for job creation? Well, Mark, you know, that's a very complicated question, and, I'm, and, and, and our council hasn't really been asked to sort of opine on the overhaul of uh, uh, the U.S. tax structure completely. That's something that our friends the Treasury and the, and the President's economic advisors are working along with the Hill on. What we've been focusing on are what are those things that can be done that will enable greater flows of capital, including credit, to particularly uh, startup businesses, small businesses, which are the generators of the great majority of jobs, uh, new jobs in America, and how can we get impediments that are placed by the government for reasons which may no longer obtain or which have become obsolete. How can we th get those impediments out of the way of, uh, of American industry so that we can move forward uh, on an accelerated basis to create new jobs? Well, sir, if I might ask them, what are some of those impediments that you speak of? Well, one of, one of the recommendations we made uh, today to the president had to do with permitting. Um, you know, uh, I think a, a, a survey that was recently done, I can't recall who did it, but it was one of these independent survey uh, operations around the globe, put the U.S. at either 27th in the world or 29th in the world in terms of, of, of efficiency of getting uh, capital projects underway and completed because we have so many hurdles that business has to go over and through and under to get a job even started. A lot of those uh, permitting uh, requirements are redundant. Some of them are obsolete. Others of them can, be, can move more quickly. And what we're trying to do is sort of sort through and without diminishing in any way the, the protective nature of those things from the point of view of the environment or public safety, just streamline the process so that, that, that current uh, projects which are on the drawing boards and which are awaiting permitting can be permitted yeah. and can move forward and can create jobs. Mr. Parsons, is the business community still uncertain about the, the direction of the economy? Is that why so much money is still sitting on the sidelines? Well, I, I think, again, that's a, it's a complicated question. I'll try and give you a simple answer. The economy is growing. It's continuing to grow. But there's still an awful lot of volatility out there and uncertainty. Uh, lending is coming back, but it's not coming back as quickly at the bottom end of what I call the pyramid, as we'd like to see. Uh, home lending is still very hesitant, and even small business lending needs to move ahead more aggressively. I think as soon as, as we can get some clarity around such things as what the capital requirements that banks are going to have to deal with and face and meet, when we can get clarity around those issues, you'll see demand will pick up because there'll be more certainty about the direction of the economy and the banks and the other providers of capital will be there to meet that demand. We're talking with Richard Parsons. He's the chairman of Citigroup. He attended that uh, Jobs and Competitiveness Council hearing in uh, Durham, North Carolina today. Sir, in an op-ed piece in today's Wall Street Journal, GECO Jeff Immelt, who heads the Jobs Advisory Panel, and Ken Chenault, the head of American Express, wrote the following, quote, there are more than two million open U.S. jobs in the U.S., in part because 
because employers can't find workers with the advanced manufacturing skills they need. They also called on the government to do more to help small businesses get loans. With the nation continuing to bleed red ink, how can any of this be achieved? Well, uh, these are things we talked about with the president today. So let's take the first of those two. The reality is we do have uh, two million jobs that are, that, that are looking for people who have the technical skills to meet those jobs. And what we need to do is we need to hook up our, uh, our non-parole educational infrastructure in this country, best in the world, with employers and with industry so that we can move people through that process, get them technically qualified to meet those jobs. And that's one of the initiatives we talked to with the president today about. In terms of small business, I think that uh, another thing we need to do, and, and one of the recommendations that we are teeing up for the president is how to uh, facilitate faster, quicker, easier lending by existing lenders to small businesses by extending some of the uh, small business financing models that currently obtain in the private sector to the public sector and by creating uh, a simplified approach to the SBA. One of the problems right now is that over the course of years there have been so many different SBA programs, so many different approaches to the SBA that it's, it's a maze that frankly um, some find simply impenetrable. Uh, right. We had the SBA commissioner in today. We're working with her and her administration and the rest of the administration to try and simplify yes. that, not to make it one stop because that's not realistic, but to make it easily navigable by, right. by small business entrepreneurs who need access to capital. Uh, Mr. Parsons, in our final moments, I wanted to bring up something that I noticed uh, this weekend. It was an article in Barron's.com, and it cited some statistics from the money manager, Bill Gunderson. He said that uh, no fewer than six of the CEOs on the President's Jobs Council have been slashing jobs over the past few years. Jeff Immelt, 20% of his workforce since 2000. Paul Odolini of Intel, 21% of his workforce since 06. Antonia Perez of Kodak, 20% percent of his workers since 09. The business leaders the president's chosen to help create jobs, some have actually cut jobs. Should the American people be concerned about that? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting that you give me those statistics because I saw a story recently about Citi and how Citi had, had, had cut 100,000 jobs. Um, it was actually uh, a matter of sort of poor research. Uh, Citi did, in fact, have um, for example, a removal of, of some 25,000 jobs since the height of the crisis. But since the height of the crisis, we've also hired 50,000 additional people for a net plus of 25. And in 2011, we'll probably hire another 25,000. I think all of those companies that have been cited are getting uh, a, a little bit, uh, they're a little bit the subject of faulty research and information. But the reality is that where we need to look for job creation and growth, you know, American industry has an obligation to get lean and mean. This is the Jobs and Competitiveness Council. So we have to be competitive. We have to be competitive with our competitors around the world, but we also have to get the engines of job creation going again. And that tends to happen at the lower end, at new job formation or new company formation and small enterprise growth. And that's where our focus has been. So I think, I think the president, moreover, there are 26 of us on this council, right. from large business, small business, some from academe, some from finance. It's got good balance. Everyone is here as a volunteer because they want to make an impact. They want to make a difference on the jobs creation scene in America. And I think it's an outstanding council that the president's put together to the man and woman. City Group Chairman and Jobs Council member Richard Parsons joining us live from Durham, North Carolina. Mr. Parsons, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much for your time today. Mark, I appreciate it.